Hey friends, what's up? Ash here. Welcome to Extra Sense. Hope you guys are doing awesome. Having a great day. We're going to be talking about niche fragrances again. Uh, today we're going to be talking about some fragrance houses that have blacklisted me over the years. And I'll give you guys some red flags that you might want to look out for when you're looking at niche reviews or niche lists or niche whatever. Kind of a bummer that niche fragrances have gotten to the point that something like this might even be needed to be spoken about. But here we are. So let's jump into it. Okay, first off, I guess let's tackle really quickly uh, my point of view. I've talked about this in other videos in the past, but it's good to kind of fit it in here as well in case you didn't see any of those. So I don't inherently have anything against a review of a fragrance that was gifted for review. For me personally, I prefer to work with stores. I don't like working with brands at all, period. And the reason for that is when you work with a brand, you get blacklisted, <laughs> which is part of what we're talking about here today, unless you say exactly what they want you to say. Now, I know that seems like uh, it's not really possible that that's how things would work in the grand scheme of things, but for the overwhelming majority of brands, it is. And we'll talk about some of that today, some of the little stories that we're gonna go over, I guess. As I've talked about a number of times, when you work with stores, they don't really care what you say about the fragrance. So it's a lot easier that way because you can get a fragrance in for free and you could say, hey, this fragrance I don't really like for this reason, this reason, this reason. And the store doesn't really care all that much as long as you're saying, hey, here's a store is a good store. See what I'm saying? Yeah, the bottle is being used kind of as a form of advertisement there, but it's not for the fragrance necessarily. Whereas when the brand sends you something for review, they're expecting that to be featured in a way that could be perceived as an advertisement for that brand, for that fragrance. So if you say, I don't like this, you're not gonna like that or you. So that's my viewpoint. I would have much, much, much less of an issue with freebies sent by the brand if it were established across the entire world of fragrances and perfumery that it's okay to say you don't like something. But for the overwhelming majority of brands, they are not okay with you saying that. And also there's gonna be an inherent bias when you get a fragrance for free from a brand because you didn't have to pay for it which is where you'll see these these videos that people do you know 10 niche fragrances that are worth full retail 20 fragrances 15 fragrances 15 niche brands 10 niche brands that are worth full retail stuff like that it's really easy to sit there and say hey guys this uh, fragrance that's $800 at full retail, it's totally worth it when you didn't pay a dime for it. Your opinion changes when you have to pay for something. So keep all of that stuff in mind. Uh, I certainly do. And when you're a YouTuber, more so than if you're just somebody on the outside looking in, you know which brands are sending what because you get filled in. Whether those brands reach out to you and they say, we wanna give you these fragrances and then you see them popping up everywhere or maybe another person that you know that's a YouTuber says, hey, look who reached out to me and they send you the email and you can see it right there. So you already know behind the scenes what people are getting before they're featuring it. And so then when you see it start to pop up and everybody's like, oh my God, you gotta have it. I didn't pay for it, but you should. That's kind of like, Ugh. And I talked about this in the Fragrance Dubois video that I did where I checked out uh, the discovery set that they sent me. That's kind of a red flag. And I imagine that less and less and less and less people will be mentioning that going forward in videos. But if somebody says, the brand sent me a discovery set and I'm featuring this full size bottle, that's, that's a red flag because what that means is the brand and the creator, and it's not necessarily done in a, in a, a shifty way, but the brand and the creator have, have worked together now. And, and the creator has said, I don't like this one, don't like this one, don't like this one, but I do like this one. So what I'm gonna do is get that one in and I'm gonna say how much I like it, which is the truth, but it's going to, to present the brand as this, this brand that's like up here, oh, so great. But then these other ones I actually hate. And I'll just sweep that under the rug. So again, you, you maybe don't view that as uh, something very shifty, but at the same time, maybe it's a little, a little iffy, you know? So let's run through some brands really quickly uh, that are, we'll just say, not fans of mine. And I do not dislike these houses. There are some fragrances that I think are absolutely fantastic from these houses. I have no ill will. It's just letting you guys know 
that when you see this stuff sometimes, like I've talked about before, you have to play by their rules. And if you don't, you're cut off. And for a lot of people out there, they don't wanna risk being cut off. So what I mean by that is they're going to curtail a lot of critiques or they're going to, to word things in a different way because you don't want the free bottle train to stop. And as I said before, that's what I love about working with stores because I have gotten fragrances in before that I thought sucked from a store and I said, this stuff is trash, I hate it. I've even gotten fragrances in that were so bad from stores that I threw them in the trash on camera and put it out there for you. And you know what the stores have told me? Nothing, they don't care. So thank you stores for being what niche brands should be. Now, I guess I should go back and say, if a niche brand did send you something for free, it would be very rude to just trash it, and like throw it in the trash on camera. So I get it, but at the same time, be able to take a critique without just going, oh, that person said they don't like that fragrance. Well, <laughs> blacklist them, next. That's not how stuff should work. It's ridiculous. Okay, back to what we were talking about. Where to start? Let's start with Creed, good old, Creed. So they blacklisted me. And uh, one of the things that you'll you'll realize as a creator when you're blacklisted is most typically they're not going to send you an email and say, hey, you're blacklisted. That's not how it works. What will happen is not that you'll just be ignored. Uh, so they will they will just pretend you no longer exist which is not really a big deal. It doesn't bother me, but it is kind of funny. So with Creed, uh, they had sent me, and this was when I was a, a smaller channel, they had sent me a sample of Aventus Cologne before it came out and a sample of um, Viking before it came out. So they reached out, you know, oh, we're the house of Creed. We'd love to send you this sample, this media sample, so you can check it out before the fragrance comes out. It's just a standard carded sample, like who cares? You know, it's a little two milliliter sample, but it was kind of cool to be able to check those out. So Viking, I thought was okay. It's grown on me over the years. I like it more now than initially. Aventus Cologne, same kind of deal. I mean, I'd rather go with Aventus in most situations, but whatever. Then I did a video where I talked about the, the anniversary edition of Aventus coming out, uh, this week in fragrance video. And I said it was kind of a cash grab to me. And I still think that's pretty much what it is. I mean, it's Aventus, but in a Green Irish Tweed bottle with a different sticker and a different cap, like a Silver Mountain Water cap and whatever. So I noticed that a lot of people who had talked nicely about Creed stuff in the past, and this is nothing against them at all, but they started to get some little collector's editions in. It made sense I wouldn't get one. I called it a cash grab, to be fair. But I had moved from my old address to here. And so my wife was like, you know, they don't have your new address. You should message them just to make sure they don't send one to you unannounced to the old address. And I told her, I'm pretty sure that they intentionally uh, are, are keeping me off this list here. Uh, but she badgered me and, and made me message them. So I went ahead and just shot them a quick message. Hey guys, you know, it was through the same way they had communicated with me previously. I said, I've moved. So my old address, if you ship it there, I'm not gonna get it. And here's my new address, uh, thanks. And they saw it, never responded, and I've never heard from them again. And since then, they also sent out their nice Viking cologne package to all the influencers or whatever that had like a fanny pack and some other stuff in there and even Viking beer. And I've uh, never heard from Creed again after I said that the Aventus Lecter's Edition seemed to me a bit of a cash grab. So that, I'll get you. Oh, and then Mask Milano. Yeah, I featured a lot of their fragrances. I bought a lot of their fragrances. The first one I ever did get though is this one. Tango. So they had reached out to me again when I was a smaller channel and they said, hey, we'd like to send you this fragrance to see if you like it. Now, I didn't understand how things worked at the time. So I was like, oh, yeah, that would be cool. Here's my address. So they sent it to me and I did like it, still do like it. I think it's a really nice scent. And I put it in my, I think it was either fall or winter niche list of, of the year that I got it because I really was enjoying it, but I hadn't reviewed it on the channel. So I sent off to them uh, an email, a follow-up email, and I said, hey guys, I really do like it. It's a great fragrance. And I featured it even in my niche list because I like it a lot. And they wrote back to me, which I've since deleted because it kind of peeped me off, but they wrote back to me and they were like, yeah, I don't care that you featured it in your niche list. I'm expecting a review from you for that fragrance. 
and I want you to highlight all the things that you like about the fragrance in the review. So don't get back in touch with me until you've reviewed the fragrance. Like they really just kind of were out and out dicks, if I'm honest, and I've never heard from them again. But like I said, I bought a lot of fragrances from them since then. And uh, this is one of those circumstances where you know that you're you're not on their good list because they send out these big media packages to like all the people who talk about their stuff the way that they expect, I guess. So like they had a big thing for their like Lost Alice fragrance and uh, had a big media kit, sent it out to a bunch of people, invited them to uh, live streams and all that stuff. Nothing. Again, I don't care, but I'm telling you that information just so you can know, oh yeah, you're actually blacklisted. Because there's a difference between um, they're not reaching out to you, but also maybe they're not really reaching out to anybody and they're having full blown like internet parties for all the people that talk about their product and sending them like big, huge kits and all this stuff. And then uh, you don't even hear anything at all, period. Uh, that's how you kind of know. It helps set the tone. Uh, let's talk about this one as well, Initio. Now, Initio is an interesting one because they sent me Atomic Rose, but they did it a roundabout way. So they had a store contact me for them and send out Atomic Rose. And then I did a review of it said it was a bit too feminine for me. I wouldn't wear it. I actually gave it away. You know, I didn't really crap on it, but I just said it's not for me, not my type of scent. And I also in that video talked about a little bit how Initio is uh, related to Parfums de Marly, how those two companies are connected. So what happened was Initio had the store reach out to me for them. And I knew it was them because the store was actually like, hey, uh, this isn't coming from me. This is coming from Initio, but and uh, Initio basically said, don't bring up in videos Parfums de Marley's relationship with Initio ever again. I guess I, I just did that again. Dang it. And yeah, just basically told me thanks, but and, you know, have a good one. And I've never heard from them again. And you guys don't need to be told this, I'm sure, but Parfums de Marley and Initio they have a core group uh, that they will send every single release to. And so I'm not on that list and never will be, but I'm okay with that because I actually just bought the new Parfums de Marly from Fragrance Buy, but I still bought it just at a discount. Not a big discount, but a discount. So Initio slash Parfums de Marly, not happening for me anytime soon. I've got a bunch of other brands here in front of me. I don't know how many you want to go through though, because then it just gets to be like, yeah, this one and that one and this one and that one. Fort and Manly, uh, pretty much same thing as Mask Milano. A really similar kind of thing happened there. Uh, still love the fragrances though. I actually just bought Late Harvest not that long ago. Once you realize how this stuff works, and you realize you don't wanna be a part of that side of it, you just don't care anymore. If a brand reached out to me and said, we want you to uh, say whatever you want, even if you're negative about it, don't worry, we won't cut you off, say whatever you want. That would be awesome. Guess how many brands have told me that? None. Then there's this one, Jacques Fott. Fragrance Le Lodon. I like this one a whole lot. Really nice vetiver fragrance. Good price on it too. So I got that fragrance. I really liked it. Talked about it. Reviewed it in a video as well. And then Jacques Fott, uh, they hit me up. They wanted to pay me $75 per video to do... Uh, they said they were trying to decide whether they wanted me to review a fragrance or put it into like my seasonal list that they were trying to decide and that they were gonna kick me 75 bucks, which did not happen, just FYI. I swear there's a conspiracy theory, my camera died and then my recorder died. <sighs> Let's get through this. So I don't remember exactly what I was saying, uh, but yeah, they offered me that. I said, no thanks. And that was that, never heard from them again, so. Uh, had issues with Amour Oud, had issues with Amouage, had issues with Teo Cabanel and uh, other brands as well. I mean, there's a decent amount of brands out there that, that have basically said that you don't play ball, go F yourself. And it's not even necessarily that you're automatically blacklisted if you say something negative. I mean, that is the case, but also you could do something in a time frame that they don't like, and that's just as bad for some of these brands. Like Amouage, for example, they have gifted me some things over the years. The overwhelming majority of stuff from Amouage that I own, I purchased. So I've got probably, I'm just like, they're right there. Like, but I've got probably comfortably 30 Amouage bottles right there. I would say uh, the ones that Amouage themselves sent to me, 
is uh, this one, Enclave and Boundless and Material. And I think that is it. Yeah, I'm like 99% sure that's it. But they have sent me like little travel sprays. The, the deal with that though, is I don't really care to feature a travel spray. Like, oh boy, look guys, Amash sent me travel spray. Let me show you how good. I don't care. They want you to feature those. And if you don't, you're not gonna get the bottles. And so I, I you know, haven't gotten any of the stuff that's come out uh, since since those. But I'm just letting you know that that's kind of how it works. Like with these brands, you have to play ball. And you can point the finger at the creator and you can say, hey, dude, that sucks that you're doing that. But at the same time, you have to point the finger at the brand as well. And you have to say, hey, man, it really sucks that the only way that you'll uh, do this, you know, gifting or whatever is if somebody hypes it and they hype it immediately. Otherwise, they're cut off because the YouTubers know some of them might play dumb. Oh, wow. Thank you for this. Whoa. But they know what's going on. You know, they know if, if you don't say this and you don't say it in the right way at the right time, they're cut off and you can say otherwise, but it's not true. I mean, everybody knows it. It's just people don't want to talk about it, but it's gotten to this point. So you have certain channels, uh, maybe they're talking about niche fragrances all the time. And then you look down the, the list of the fragrances, especially if you're a YouTuber and you're just like, oh, out of this list of whatever, 15, you bought none of them because every single one of those ones in the list is the same fragrance that the brand reached out to me and offered to me. But that's how it's gotten. It's a, it's a crazy thing. All right, I'm, uh, I'm out of here. Thank you guys for hanging with me here today. Uh, I know these stupid videos, like it's it's not intended to be a, a drama type video at all. It's intended to kind of fill you in on how this crap is still going on behind the scenes. Because unless at some point there's pressure put onto the niche brands that tells them we want actual reviews on this stuff, whether somebody likes it, loves it, dislikes it, hates it, or is neutral or indifferent, that's what we're more interested in instead of just the uh, pay for play. And I know some people say, oh, you know, the fragrance, if it's sent for free, it's just an advertisement. I don't watch those. That's kind of like a simplification of it. It's really now become this thing where uh, like they will try to almost strong arm you in a way into saying what they would want you to say. And so if you're a smaller channel, you get effed because there's nobody there that you can rely on to like have your back. So like at this point, I don't care if a fragrance brand, a niche fragrance brand doesn't like me. <laughs> Or if they they say, oh, oh, we don't like what you said. You don't get our fragrance for free anymore. I don't care, man. <laughs> like, I'll buy it. Get bent. But all these smaller channels, uh, they're just going to get taken advantage of. And then the people watching are going to be, well, taken advantage of. They're getting something out of it. But you know what I'm saying. And then the people watching are going to be just kind of like eyes glazed and jaded. So the whole thing sucks. All right, I'm out of here. Stay safe. See you again another day. Peace. Mm -hmm.